Hello everyone, my name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence On Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're joined by Brendan Cook, who plays Evan on Hulu's new hit thriller slash drama, Tell Me Lies. The show is about Lucy Albright and Stephen DeMarco, who quickly fall into an addictive entanglement that will permanently alter their lives and the lives of everyone around them. So to talk about that crazy season one finale, here is Brandon Cook. I'm so excited to have you because the last time we spoke was, I think, before it even came out, the show. Yeah. At mm-hmm. press, we were given screeners. So I haven't spoken to you since. So I'm going to just get right in. Yeah. <laughs> start off with, I'll start with a nice, easy question. So start okay. off with, how does it feel to be the only, quote, nice person with good morals <laughs> on the show? Because you were literally, like, you play Evan, obviously, and Evan seems to be... I think the one of the, if not the nicest character that is on the show that exists. So yes. what does that feel like? It's nice because nobody hates you. Everybody's like really, everybody's on your side, you know? And that, that feels pretty good. Uh, I feel really bad for Jackson sometimes because he, <laughs> he probably gets the brunt of a lot of things. But it, it's, it's nice. It feels like, you know, you have a, a squad with you and everybody's rooting for you. You know, yeah. obviously things happen. So uh <laughs> <laughs> what have you but uh yeah it's it's really nice yeah for the most part yeah i would say 90 yeah. percent before you know anything major happened people were yeah. like super excited <laughs> when you read a script like this now obviously it's adapted from a book but mm-hmm. very different so when you read a script you get this you read about evan you kind of understand the character a little bit i'm sure there's notes in the script and things like that how do you prep to create evan to make him to go from Brandon yourself to walk on and to kind of embody him. Is there something that you do or prep or research or just anything in order to get that done? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I read the scripts a few times. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I, I go through and do like, you know, the basic actory stuff is, you know, what, uh, what do I say about myself? What do others say about me? What do I do versus what do I say? Um, what information about my history can I gather to understand, you know, where he's from and how he may act and how he may be. Um, you know, we're all, we, we, we do a bunch of things. We, we are our actions, but then there's a lot of subtext there too, based on like upbringing, parents, siblings, if there are any, where you came, where, where you grew up and stuff like that. So I do all of that basic work. And then you have to do the hard part, which is the lines. I think, I, I don't know any actor that loves learning lines, but you do that and then you you start playing around. You start seeing what what works, what doesn't. You you start seeing what, uh, what makes sense, what doesn't. And yeah, and you, you hope for the best. Hope for the best. <laughs> you did such a good job. And I thought it was interesting too. If you compare it to like a show of like Survivor, I mm-hmm. feel like Evan would have won because it's like, you're a slow burn, right? So like in the right. beginning of the game and like, you know, where he's having different conversations with characters and he's kind of observing things. Uh-huh. But then, you know, I would say the vacation is like where kind of Evan's big kind of episode is. Yeah. But prior to that, I, I think it was prior to that or a couple of times, I guess I should say throughout the season, Lucy comes to Evan and asks Evan questions about Steven and, you know, what he thinks. And Evan has obviously known Steven longer than us, the audience, than Mm -hmm. some of the characters that are on the show. Mm -hmm. So do you think when you were like prepping for background and trying to come up with like how, like, you know, we're all bros, like we've all been together at school and all that stuff. Did you come up with a reason as to why he might want to get involved and answer those questions? Why he might not want to get involved? How much he knows that Steve, because, you know, he knows he plays around. So like, he knows how much he doesn't know, like all of those kind of things. Yeah, I I think you kind of have to. You kind of have to make a reason for every action. And you also have to make a a distinction on whether the character is aware of the reason or not. Because I I think you as the actor should know, but the, you know, we do things all the times that we we're like, why did I do that? When you look back on it, and sometimes you it takes years for you to realize, oh, it's because I felt like this or this happened, and this makes me respond in this way. 
Um, so I, I think you have to do and you have to think about that stuff because it it just adds the layers that you need, you know, it adds the layers that are helpful in bringing words alive from a page. Right. So, I mean, you did such a good job. I love Thank Evan. You. I think everyone loves Evan. I, and, you know, we'll get into the later stuff, but I think everyone loves Evan still. But, you know, I just loved watching him and watching him kind of like evolve and get a voice, a little bit more mm -hmm. of a voice. I do think that he was a little stuffled in the beginning because you have such big personalities. You're dealing with Wrigley and you're dealing right, with, right, right. Evan, you know, so I feel like there was a little like, you know, stifling there. What was it like in terms of, I will I'll start with the beginning in the episode, the infamous trip episode, because for that one, right. I feel like there were multiple things in this episode that kind of made me like super sad and for mm -hmm. your character, the fact that he has to buy his own birthday cake um, and that's expected and normal. Yeah. Like that's not like mm -hmm. an abnormal thing. Um, and that he thinks that's normal because he even says to him like multiple times to different characters, like, what do you mean? Like, of course I bought it. Like, yeah, that's my, my cake. Um, the fact yeah. that, you know, he's visiting his house and they have that one scene where the neighbor walks over and is kind of like questioning Evan, like, you know, what are you doing in this neighborhood type of thing, which ties mm -hmm. into a, um, a question from a fan, which I, you know, can bring up, I guess, about you, um, about the racial issues. So that they said that mm -hmm. Megan and Kara had done a chat a little bit and kind of brought some of the racial aspects into the show this mm -hmm. fan said that the racial issues are kind of like non-existent except for that neighborhood in mm -hmm. that scene. so um would you want to see more of that kind of explored because yeah she walks over she says something it feels super awkward when i watched it i felt super uncomfortable. Yeah. and then she like yeah. walks away so is that something that you would want to bring it and what's funny is the question ends with keep it sex and lies or uh. add more <laughs> add more of that into it i do think it would be right. neat to see more of a little bit what evan has to deal with given being in a privileged position and you know yeah. African American. But like what is your take on on that whole thing because it's it's a quick scene but it's between the cake him driving by himself him being alone and that yeah, I, that's a lot I, I think there's a there's a lot of layers there that aren't just um, the lady at you know questioning whether I should be there at the house. I think you know I went through a similar experience as Evan, and I've talked about this before. Where like I went to a private university in the South, but everybody was from like New England, so it was very like Hamptons, you know, Vineyard Vines, all of that stuff. And so I feel like from the jump, I kind of understood Evan a little bit um, or a lot, actually. And I think there are some realities there that, you know, I would love to explore um, because I think they had a depth there. But like, yeah, of course, we want to keep it, you know, sexy and, and lying and all of that. So, you know, it's there's plenty to explore. Mm. And uh We'll, we'll see what happens. I'm I'm excited either way. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, and I think it's a good intro into learning more about Evan too. Like, so if there's a season two, or I should say, when there's a season two, yeah, right, it's fun to learn like so much more about his parents because there's yeah. this gorgeous house that he like yeah. just has to himself to bring his friends yeah. year after year, and like you know, like so I think there's a lot that we can like kind of learn about him, and I think that might come up, and maybe there's things that you know his family taught him or ways to deal with it, or just like various things. To kind I of mean, feel comfortable in that scenario, you know? Yeah, you talked about it earlier. Like, uh, you know, how often do you see a rich Black kid on, on TV? And it's it's not very often. And I think that was one of the things that really actually excited me about the character was that this is a perspective or this is a a, a person that we don't normally get to see. And it's, it's so many layers to that, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, it's, it's so many layers to that. And so there's a lot there that can be uncovered. I mean, even the relationship with his dad, uh, the relationship right. with his mom, you know, uh, what was it like? What were his back home friends like? You know, how was, you know, it's it's, it's a lot of stuff there that would be fun to explore. But we're, we're always going to keep it sexy. We're always going to tell some more lies and, and you know. <laughs> keep the drama going. 
I, I can't wait. I can't wait to do all of it. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, I have to ask about this episode too, because this is like the episode in terms of shooting. I should say this is the uh-huh. episode for hell. So you guys just had like thunder yeah. hitting the house, like yeah. like all sorts of stuff. Rain reshoots a million times. Oh yeah. no, we're shooting the scene. No, now we're not shooting the scene. Right. So, that and- that was that was tough. That was um, I think the episode in itself was. I think everybody was looking forward to it because it felt like theater and all this other stuff. We're in one house and this, that, and the third. But I mean, between like you said, the thunderstorm, uh, there were ticks out of nowhere. So we had the we tick watch. Uh, the the day we did all of the canoeing stuff, it was probably one of the hottest days. I mean, it's a lake too, so it's it's just real muggy and and bugs everywhere and. Um, you know, we, we filmed in the South, so there's a lot of that as well. The, the lightning, the thunderstorm, actually the lightning hit the house. Uh, I think Ben actually got shocked. I don't know if he told anybody that. I've heard this. I heard yeah. that, but I wasn't sure. So Ben got hit by lightning. That's what I heard. Ben, ben got, we were at the house. He was on his phone. And when the lightning hit the house, it short circuit and, and went through and, and shocked him. And we, we were happy. He's okay. But <laughs> That, that was crazy. It was it was a lot. It was a lot. Uh, I mean, we we were supposed to the big scene where I blow up at everybody. We we rescheduled. We had to reschedule that like maybe three or four times. So it's like just because it was it was just a lot. It was it was a very tough, tough uh, episode. And because everybody was in one house. So you have cast, crew, makeup hair you know uh costume everybody's in one house and after a while just and it's hot outside after a while it just kind of gets you know like that but everybody was great no you know no major any anything so but yeah well what's so funny is like when I heard that story I was like no way because it looks so good and obviously yeah well it turned out great it's great but like you would never know (laughs) you got some of you were sick some of you were like i've been like it's just crazy yeah i forgot about that too Mm -hmm. and it's literally like it looks sunny beautiful i know you guys filmed in atlanta it gets like hot as hell down there like i just can't imagine but it just looks so effortless and that's what's like the i guess the beauty or the Mm -hmm. magic of making a tv show but like none of us had any clue um i wanted to ask you of course about the bowling ball so it's funny, yeah. Megan had mentioned this, that one of the writers had thrown this idea of this bowling ball and this being like this epic thing that they want to break at some point. And she was Ew. like, oh, we're not going to do that. And then later she was like, wait, let's come back to that. Like, let's discuss this. Yeah. Was that fun for you? Because like when I was in college, we had like fun, stupid things that we would do. And like, mm-hmm. you know, you just come up with something fun. And the fact that these guys yeah. were like, oh, the ball, like, you know, and like wanting to really like destroy it. And you were like, this is the year, like this is happening. So for little mm-hmm. things that they add in like that, does it make it feel not only one or that you're really in college, but two, is it fun to play mm-hmm. with a thing like that? Like a, a bowling ball scene that you're going to try to explore? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, you, you, the whole, th- there's different, everybody has a different uh, goal, but one of the goals is to blow up a bowling ball, like at, at any means possible. So yeah, it was, it was a great fun. And uh Obviously, Wrigley had probably the most fun because he got to throw it off the balcony and and jump in the pool naked. And he was he was having quite the time. Um, there was actually a part <laughs> that we cut, uh, you know, in the beginning when he jumps on the bed and he's naked or whatever, whatever. Oh, yeah. Where he's shutting the bed where it's like nobody's going to take it from him. Yeah, there's another there's, a, there's actually a part that they end up having to cut, I think, for time. But he like gets up and he's still naked and he looks out the window and he's like, wow, are those geese? Like he's just like <laughs> fully naked, just foot like he. So Spencer had got to have probably the best time out of everybody. Uh, but yeah, anytime you get a, a goal, like blow up a bowling ball or something like that, it's, it's, it's a great time. I mean, I, that's so funny. And for Spencer, I mean, I don't even know how that must feel, but just to be able to just like go from zero to a hundred and just play hundred, right? Yeah, it, yeah, yeah, real quick. Like it must be so much fun. Um, real quick, yeah. like kind of end with that episode though. You, I feel like we learn a lot, almost maybe the most mm-hmm. out of, from Evan in that episode from start to finish. Just like in terms of yeah. his personality, getting the voice, like I spoke, like spoke about earlier, like he finally just tells everybody to basically fuck off. And I mean, it was time for him to at his friends. And then 
without him knowing these pieces are dropped to kind of manipulate him in, sort of in a way of yes he's attracted to Brie but ultimately ending up sleeping with Brie so for you yeah. how do you compute that too because while you're having this huge breakthrough and we're learning so much about Evan in this episode at the same time we know that you're getting manipulative manipulated by other characters so are you thinking Evan likes Brie and that's why they get together? Is it a mixture of both that people are pushing you without you even knowing together? And you guys like, so like, what was your like take in your mind to reason to make that work? I think it was a bit of both. I think, I think Brie was great and, 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 Evan and Brie got on really well, as you saw in episode four, which was her episode. And then uh, obviously earlier in, in seven and six as well, um, you know, the art studio situation. Like, I think they got on and they had been texting, you know, before before we went to the lake house and stuff. And I think, uh, you know, he he broke up with Allie, his girlfriend originally. And it was kind of a uh, right time, right right place but you need a little push as well and I, th I think the little extra added pressure almost made him make a decision mm, and kind of okay. and kind of got him out of you know guys sometimes can not be as aware as we probably should be <laughs> and and I think <laughs> I think it did kind of send, send a little 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 ding to his head of like oh this is somebody that likes you oh wait do you like her you you doing things that people do when they like somebody to she th you know what I mean like it's not mm -hmm. kind of set them on a a spiral and not necessarily a bad spiral but a little bit of a spiral and uh yeah it was it was sweet but I think I think there's a little manipulation there as well I think I think the added pressure that Evan felt probably not knowing it was manipulation right also led to to them to them getting together um which. I mean, they end up getting married, so. Right, true. It, it must yeah. not have been, you I know mean, what I mean? So. It's not a bad thing necessarily. It was just, you know, it's but it's it's interesting, you know? And I think that's, yeah. the show is very interesting. And I think that's why we all argue about it because of those things, right? Because you go, yeah. would they have ended up together? I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't if like there weren't those pushes. No. Maybe it's a good thing that there were those. It's just like. There's so much yeah. gray in this show that it's very difficult. A lot of gray. There are a lot of I would love to explore that, though. I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens when we get a season two. That's what uh, we're saying the whole time. When we get yeah, a season yeah, yeah. two. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, I would love, that's something else I would love to explore, too. It's just, you know, their relationship. Because it's, yeah. Let, let's say, that, that, would, that would be fun. That would be fun. Like, leave it at that before it gives too much away. yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> So another question I got, which relates to this episode, but it also relates to moving on and before, and prior to it. So like moving past this episode, getting closer to the finale and your dramatic moment. <laughs> before we get to that, um, a lot of people were asking me, you know, if uh, they if Evan really liked Lucy, did he love Lucy? Was he interested? Like various aspects of that. And I think there's yeah. reasoning, obviously, because of what happens in the finale. But it's very clear that he likes her. I mean, like he even says it and he's kind of like, come on, you know, like, you know, you know. Yeah. And she yeah. feels so comfortable going to him and talking to him about issues and problems. And he's answering those things. So for you, did you feel like, although, yes, Bree's in the picture and she wasn't the whole time. There were times where he was talking to Lucy before mm -hmm. he Brie was even in the picture but do you feel like he mm -hmm. really did like her and that maybe he would have went for it or was considering it my thought is evan saw lucy first but evan was in a relationship at the time mm -hmm. and steven this is all my stuff i mean i don't i don't know what megan no, yeah, that's good no that's good though your background this is like what you like you're um, for it i think i think I think Evan and Steven, actually, I'm going to change it a little bit. I think they saw it at the same time, but Evan couldn't do anything. You know, Evan was in a right, relationship. Right. He had been in there for, I think, two years. It, like, it was, it was, you know, he couldn't do anything. That's not his, that's not what he does. And then when he got single, he wasn't keen, but he was like, oh, like, I'm free. And, and 
but he knows his friend too and he knows they've been kind of together and right. he knows that Steven has never really fully committed to a woman and and he's I've seen everything because I'm his roommate you know and and uh, I think that kind of rubs me the wrong way because now it's a girl that I like as well. Mm-hmm. You know, when it was Diana, it was different. That's that's your girlfriend. That's that's not be- that's between y'all essentially. But like, I kind of have developed feelings for this girl as well, and I see that you are mistreating her. Right. And though I don't know her as well as you know her, you know, I think I think Evan kind of put her on a pedestal a bit as well put Lucy on a pedestal because Evan doesn't you know Evan doesn't really know Lucy if we're being honest like they they got coffee once you know he says it like when have you ever asked me for a coffee Uh, right right yeah yeah so you know they they don't they don't really hang out by themselves I think he's infatuated by her I think he thinks she's very pretty and he likes what he knows and and have seen but he doesn't really know her so I think he's put her on his pedestal and because of his moral high ground a little bit, um, he he's he's feeling some type of way that Stephen is mistreating her because there's a little bit of evidence like, well, you know, if I was with her, I would treat her well. Yeah, you know, a little bit of the little bit of uh, shade that he throws throughout the throughout the episodes at times feels that way. See, now I was wondering this, which nobody has brought up before. So mm-hmm. um, I'm going to shoot it to you and see what you think. But I felt like that was an actual moment where Evan is being manipulative because. Which one? Which moment? Like when he's sitting down, anytime that he talks to Lucy, basically. But when she really towards the end starts coming to him about, you know, don't lie to me. Has he done this before? Is he lying? Like, you know, asking a million questions about Steven. We know at this point for sure that Evan has something for her, an attraction, a like, yeah. like something. There's something there. Now, whether or not he's dating Bree, you know, like, listen, like I said, you know, before in interviews, it's college, it's life. Like, you know, Bree, right. and, you know, they're together, whatever. I don't even know if they're defined right. at this point. Like, I have no idea what's going on with them. So I didn't yeah. think anything of him talking to her or trying to warn her, or give her stuff. But what I found interesting is that, you know, there's always this like bro code, right? And the girls have it too, a girl code where we don't tell. But Evan is very open with, and again, like he doesn't come out spilling a ton of information, tells her enough to answer her questions. So for me, Uh I was watching that. That was the first time I went, hmm, I wonder if Evan's doing this on purpose because if they finally break away, will that give him an in to date her? That's really interesting. Um, I don't think I thought about it like that, but that is really interesting. Yeah, like I, no one's brought this up, so I was like, yeah, like no, I'm that, that, making that, it up in my brain because I'm like overanalyzing the show. But I was yeah. like, oh, it's interesting because he's, and then when he hears like that she's upset, he kind of seems like a little relieved, like, all right, like yeah, like they're not gonna like. Work. Oh, and I think after Evan talks to Stephen, he goes into the room. And he's like, so how's things with Lucy? Almost like right, he's yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. They broke there up was a if something there. Yeah, I think, um, I think, I think Evan, like I said, has built her, put her on a pedestal a little bit, and develops these uh, pseudo feelings about someone that you know he he doesn't really know, but he he likes, you know, and, and has an infatuation for. Her. And um, I think. I think she broke him down a little bit with that scene at the coffee shop. I think, I think he, he started empathizing and, and feeling empathy for, her because this was the first time where Steven's mess has kind of involved him with a girl that he likes as well. So there's so many elements now going into it. That's different than before, before, you know, uh, any side chick that Steven was messing with or whatever, didn't really involve me. And I, I was in a relationship, et cetera. But now this is the first time where, hey, man, I like this girl, too. And I'm not trying to show it fully because you're my boy. But at the same time, you're treating her like shit. <laughs> right. and, and I, you know, at the coffee shop, I think Evan felt that and he was really feeling that. And he, he was like, I can't lie to this girl that I that I like so much. Um, So Evan definitely broke bro code a little bit. Yeah, but um, there, was like a, there was like a moment too. And like what had happened, like, and I always give like hypotheticals. So hypothetically, if Evan did ask him, so, you know, what's going on with Lucy? And mm-hmm. what if Steven's response was, we broke up? 
my question was like, well, would the end of the show had been com- completely different? Like, would Evan had made like a moment? Because to me, that was the one moment that was shady, if you want to call it that, manipulate, whatever you want to call it. As Stephen would say, persuasion. Like, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, that was the only time I felt that Evan really did anything that would have pushed one way or the other or moved around the, the chess. When he, when he asked Stephen, when he asked yeah, Stephen. Like, and like when he's like, when he's telling Lucy stuff, breaking bro code, I felt like it was on purpose because he wanted them broken up. So That's like, I, so like, what if Stephen was like, yeah, we broke up, you know, like would Evan yeah, have what if I, I think, I think, um, I think there is a little bit, obviously part of Evan that wanted them not to be together. Do I think that in his right mind, obviously what happens at the the, the party when Evan is drunk. Oh, and yeah, yeah I'm getting and, there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that goes differently. Well, no, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think in Evan's head, he would be relieved if if he did. Because look, I think Evan feels a little betrayed as well because Evan has risked his friendship with with this guy that he's known since college and and has roomed with every year and he's risked that friendship for a girl so he's essentially let a girl come between him and his friend and he risked that only for her to then essentially for lack of a better phrase stab him in the back and go right back to him Mm -hmm. and uh I think there's a little bit of betrayal there that he feels and so when he asks Steven you know how are you and Lucy that's him checking in of like yo did it did it not did it work because that sounds that sounds manipulative I don't think I don't think in the moment he was being manipulative manipulative but I think as the time was going on after the conversation he was like well if they aren't together then what could happen you know what I mean like right, I think right. it was something that kind of settled in he was like oh well maybe if they're not together maybe you know, who knows? Maybe, you know, Steven never really settles with a girl. Maybe he won't care. Maybe I can, you know, actually right. this will work. This makes sense. So I don't think he's a manipulative person like that. But I think when he asked Steven that, I think that was definitely a little bit of checking in to see, <laughs> to see what's going on. Yeah. yeah, to see if there was like an opening, like, you know, yeah, if there was a way yeah, that he could like, yeah. you know, go in and pursue it, you know? Definitely, definitely. Yeah, but uh, like, it was just interesting because like I said, everyone talks about so much and like, listen, we all love Evan and he's like the sweetest, nicest guy, but that was just the one little section when he's kind of like giving her answer. And I was like, wow, he's like really like betraying his friend. But I was happy that he was because of what he was saying. But then I went, hmm, I wonder if he's like, you know, trying to break them up on purpose. Well, I think too, like Evan has been friends with Stephen for a while. So he they he knows um he knows how he is. And it's interesting right. that this is the girl that I think Evan too is he's maturing. Like he's maturing at a different pace than I think Wrigley and Steven. And he, if you notice, he doesn't like to be around a lot of that stuff a lot of time and or involved. And I think Lucy coming in and that whole situation has opened Evan's eyes to make him ultimately not want to room with Steven, you know, the last right, year. Right, right. And, and, you know, he, he doesn't want to be around that energy anymore. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think Evan is maturing at a different rate and he doesn't want to be around steven's bullshit yeah and then here's the funny part so the gray zone because now after we're saying like you know maybe it was maybe it wasn't i don't know like mm-hmm. you know we're and we're like just like hypothetically talking like what would have happened mm-hmm. then we get to the finale yes. so finale. the finale kind of in a way i'm not gonna say that i'm right but i'm just gonna say that it kind of proves a little bit that you think so? and was trying to push some things around <laughs> <laughs> because you have this epic moment where you know Lucy shows up to the Hawaiian party, Evan's uh-huh. there, a bunch of people are there. Obviously, Steven, with all his like screwed upness, he leaves with Diana. They do that beautiful slow mo down the stairs. Yeah, I was um, there for that. That was crazy. I mean, it was like it was an awesome. Alicia's movie. look too was just like whoa. It was yeah. She... That look was like gotcha. Like yeah, <laughs> she, was like, yeah, 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 yeah. she, killed, she, that. she killed that. She killed that. Everybody yeah. was like, ooh, when they saw it on the monitor. <laughs> like, 
Yeah. It and like, great. I can imagine too, like filming it, obviously it's not in slow motion. So like, right. I don't know how they did that, like really awesome, like, but just the way that they both kind of, and they're, they're so tall, like they're the presence yeah. of both of them. And like, you know, how they're walking down these stairs, it was very significant. And it was definitely a sign of a no return at that moment, not like yeah. forever, but like at that moment, it was definitely like a, like Lucy doesn't go after him. Like that's a, yeah. he's walking out with her end of story. It was, that was tough. That was, I remember seeing um the first time I saw the finale, mind you, I was there and filmed it, but <laughs> seeing the finale for the first time, I remember seeing that moment like, uh, that's, that's a tough one. You think everything is going great and amazing and you leave him alone for five seconds and now he's chosen the other side essentially and and right. does it in front of your face i i oof, that's a tough one <laughs> <laughs> well one of my it's really funny because one of my all-time favorite lines of the whole show is from you so yeah. that can happens and so and uh, like i said we're we're all talking about like yeah, kevin wasn't really playing but it, it's just funny because then we lead into that. That happens. So, of mm -hmm. course, who does Lucy go to? She's, like, hysterical. You know, she's upset. Evan makes sense. They're yeah. talking. And then I, the line that Evan says, and I'm going to screw it up, but it's, like, something along the lines of, like, I didn't think, I, like, he could shock me anymore or, like, something like that. Like, like that you just couldn't, yeah. like, he's done so much stuff. You've known him so much longer that at this point you were, like, mm -hmm. I didn't think I could even be shocked by anything mm -hmm. that he would do and then this happens and you're like drinking and you're like and i'm shocked like so you're sitting there shook like all of us like as audience members yeah. and like lucy's yeah. like hysterical but you're like completely shocked that he did this yeah. so what was before we get into the next part what was that like for uh -huh. you or i should say for evan because it, i would imagine evan is very much like an audience member at, at by the time we get to the finale you're like you can't shock me like i've seen it all like steven's like right, 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 right. so like you were like us when you were when you say i i thought i could like literally i could not be shocked anymore with by him and then this happened mm -hmm. so for evan what did what was going through your mind as an actor when you're sitting there to play that that you're getting shocked by a friend that you've known x amount of years that has just pulled a stunt that even you didn't see coming yeah uh so there were like two parts right there were when they walked down the stairs and we filmed that and then there's the the part with me and and grace on the stairs right. uh and oh it was it was just tough because we, we also did like there, there were different versions too and 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 then one what of the different versions? Know, uh, well, well, different versions in in Lucy's response. Let me put it like that. Oh, okay. And, and a couple of them, I was just like, ah, like we Aww. we explored different things. And uh, I mean, Grace is a great actress, so you know, we go on the stairs, and she, I mean, she's a great actress. So like, I, I, it was yeah. we playing. We were there. We were, you know, and you felt so much for Lucy at that time and Evan's just like the right thing to do if we're all friends is to go comfort this person but obviously <laughs> um <clears throat> yeah things go obviously later a different way right uh, but it it was weird yeah it was it was it was weird it you know you're sitting there and, and Grace is like what the fuck just happened and I'm like yeah I don't fucking know yeah like it was like, the first time i feel like you were shocked like Evan yeah shocked. yeah yeah but i mean if you if you saw though i was in the the room with them before but then they started flirting and it got weird and like, yes and evan yeah. leaves which is exactly kind of like what you're saying that when things start going awry evan's like i'm out like i want nothing to uh, do with yeah no nah, he doesn't scenario, want to be in the scenario when he's coming down the stairs you can't but be involved because you're like you're exactly. sitting right there i mean like and i don't think evan ever saw that happening either i don't think evan yeah. put that if they're together alone for five minutes that all of a sudden in front of lucy he would do that normally he's you know better about things like that but that's that's like the straw that broke the camel's back that how do you how do you it's so evil <laughs> yeah. um and yeah i think that's why evan was genuinely shocked as well because it, it felt so evil 
So, before, and like my last question before we get to the good stuff, which I know you're probably like, oh gosh, she's going to ring oh, yeah, it up. Right. Uh-huh. But do you think at that point, my only other question for Evan at that point is, the relationship between him and Steven. So do you think after that stunts pulled now, obviously when we see you guys at the wedding, he's invited to the wedding and like, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll get like, we'll talk a little bit more about like some specific stuff, but he's invited to the wedding, but we never see Steven talk to any of you guys other than Lucy. We only see. So I've no, and the only conversation is that Brie mentioned something like I told Evan to keep him away from you, things like Mm -hmm. that. So I'm assuming could be wrong that Evan invited him. So, but I was, you know, and this is years later, but mm-hmm. again, there's also a little hint that you guys have seen each other since uh, as college roommate, like, you know, in the past couple of years, mm-hmm. you know, cause I think Lucy says something like we haven't seen each other in four years or something. So there is stuff where you guys are all seeing each other. So do you think in that moment when even Evan shocked, mm-hmm. do you think that that causes some sort of break between the relationship between him and Steven to come? Because we don't see it yet. Oh, I think, I think, yeah, I, I think that was already starting though. I think throughout the season, it's it's been a slow burn. And when he essentially breaks up with Steven and say, hey, I'm gonna go room by myself next year. I think he's already starting to detach himself. And seeing that is probably like, like I said, the straw that broke the camel's back. That's, I mean, how Evan potentially is thinking, you know, how can I be associated with a person that moves like this in public as well? It's not even like, He's doing this in private anymore. This is in front of the woman he was just with. Now, like it, it's it's nuts. So I think, yeah, that's that's tough. I mean, well, it's, it's you know what? Tough. It's good stuff to explore for season two because, like, I'm so curious. Like, sure, I want to like sure. what happens. Like, what does he go up to him and like how do they remain friends? Or maybe they like quote break up for like a period of time and they aren't friends or like. But I think they, they do. I think that's what the. I think that's what the saying that I don't want to room with them next year. I think that's, that's the breakup. So I right. think they try and enjoy the night, but you know, we don't, we don't really talk during that night. We don't really, you know, it's, it's a little awkward. We're, we're all friends. Yeah. But I think Evan is also a little non-confrontational. So I think that, that um, having to have that conversation before the party was really tough for him. And, you know, he even makes jokes trying to like ease the blow and not really telling exactly how we feel, which is, you know, he, he hints at it like you and Wrigley have your own thing, but he doesn't really explore his feelings as much and, and say how he really feels about Stephen or even or even fully calls him out. You know, he 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 has said little things here and there, but he doesn't fully like really lay into Steven, like how I think some of my friends would if I was to start <laughs> acting, you know, start acting crazy. Yeah. So I think that was the breakup. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what Megan and, and the writers have for season like for two. Yet. Yeah, yeah. But, but um, I have a feeling that it's going to be tough because also, you know, does anybody, I know we haven't gotten there yet, but does anybody find out about well, Lucy and yeah, Neff? So- Yes, let's talk about this. Okay, so Uh, let's just get into it. it. So um, first of all, there's two things. You're going to kill me when I say one of them. I'm sorry. Uh But there's two Uh things. (laughs) First of all, so he's comforting her. And then I would say there were three shocks in the finale. The first shock is the, you know, Stephen and Diana walking down the stairs. Shock Mm -hmm. number two is the fact that Evan's comforting Lucy, which turns into them sleeping together. So that's like shock number two of the finale. So for you, everyone's like, what happened? Like, how did this happen? How did you hook up with Lucy? Uh, Why would you do that? You're with Brie. Like, just like a million questions, right? uh, And the second portion of that, which is the one you're going to kill me, I think it's the first time we kind of see you naked. Because like um, all these characters, (laughs) I knew knew you were going to kill me for this one. I'm sorry. But all these characters are having sex and you're seeing them naked all the time. And even like you're, you're like nice sex with Brie. I don't right. see, just see you just like laying out there, like just right. showing whatever. So of course, as an actor, you know, and I saw the live tweeting and I'm sure a lot of people saw like the live stuff. They were all like, you know, it's embarrassing, right? Like, and they're all like making fun of you and giving you a hard time. Yeah. So yeah. as an actor, uh-huh. what is that like when you read that on the script? I would have a heart attack if they were like, yeah, you're going <laughs> to there and like, you're just going to be like, we're just going to show your back. And I'd be like, wait, we're what? Like, what are we yeah. doing? 
So what was it like as an actor to like to handle that? Because that for you, I think, was one of the first scenes, I think, that we actually see you naked. Yeah. naked. Yeah. Whereas like the other actors, I would assume like over time, you kind of get sort of used to it. And right, so they, right. they just like threw you in and laid you there. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that like for you as an actor reading it? And then uh, how do you explain Evan's actions? Going, yes, like going going for Lucy. Yeah, right. Um, well, the first thing I said when I read it was like, uh, oh, my mom is going to kill me for this one. She's going to. And and I, I think I scarred her a little bit, which is interesting because, you know, she's wiped my butt when I was a baby. So I don't know why. Hey, she's like, your mom. Saying that, but I guess different circumstance. Um, but yeah, I was I was game. I was like, let's do it. Um, it's. It's a female led show. I feel like I feel like the female characters are are really put forward and I love that. And we were really positive on those elements, even when doing myself and Bree's uh sex scene and stuff like that. Like that was a big discussion. Like, you know, uh this is about Bree. A hundred percent. Let's do it. You know, we don't we don't see that enough in film and television. So I I, I, I was a hundred percent game. And, yeah, and I you love know, that. like not to interrupt you, but I love that because I do feel like we women in particular have been showing everything forever and, and nobody right. works twice when a guy shows something, right. God forbid, geez, like, you know, we all freak right. out, you know, like, like, like it's crazy. So that's what yeah. I love so much about this show is like a lot of the male characters on the show, you know, we were talking about like, you know, the joke with Spencer, like, you know, that, you know, he's running around as Wrigley. Yeah. You know, a lot. A lot of the guys yeah. on the show, like, and you know, Jackson, um is showing stuff so of yeah. course for me as a viewer that like critique shows not like you know mm -hmm. in terms of like watching it i was like it's about damn time like you know like you know <laughs> seeing all these girls yeah. knowing everything like come on so to me it wasn't yeah, a, it wasn't a big deal but as an actor you know i feel like at least from what i've heard from people you kind of get a little used to it and you have kind of the same crew in there with you and stuff like that and for you i felt really bad because i felt like they were just like they kind of just threw you in it wasn't like you <laughs> like progress it was like they were like yeah we're just gonna throw them laying, yeah. laying there so for you I, I wasn't sure if it was like oh my gosh i feel like super uncomfortable because it's like this is suddenly happening or do you feel more comfortable because not only did all the other actors kind of do it already mm -hmm. but you're also now you're super familiar with the crew it's not like you were like the first one right first right right yeah worked. i think i think we had a great cast and a great crew and so they made having to do things like that which may be otherwise you know uncomfortable comfortable like everybody was great it was one of it was towards the last week or two of filming you know so it felt like a safe space which was nice um and, you know, how funny is it when, you know, you wake up, I, I don't, you know, everybody's been to college when you wake up naked after a night and you're like, why you feel like extra exposed because you're like butt naked, you know what I mean? I think that's hilarious. So <laughs> and when when uh, when we were, you know, talking about it and, and mapping it out and stuff, I was like, this, this is great. This is hilarious. Did it feel a little exposing at times? Yeah. You know, uh, especially when Robin was telling us how the camera was going to go and, and all of that. And, uh, but yeah, I think, I think Grace has done enough nudity. She didn't need to be nude, you know, right, right. I, I, let's, let's, let's do it. So. And see, and I love that because I feel, like I said, like, I feel like why does this have to be a thing? Because right. with women, it's not a thing. So with men, I'm not asking the question to make it a thing. It's more of like, I was so happy that this show was relatively as close as it could be to being equal. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, right, right, right. Showing. And then for the sex scenes, even if a guy's not showing something, what you said exactly with Brie, a lot of the sex is for women. It's not, you mm -hmm. know, like where you're seeing like guys do like, you know, more things than just like have sex in terms of like, missionary i guess position mm -hmm. they're doing more things to pleasure a woman than you would yeah. see in another show so all of those things matter and all of those things yeah. you would think would be normal yeah, and yeah, not. yeah so this show really made a difference by showing all of those things so i like commend you for doing it. i commend the guys for doing it to stepping up because the girls had to show it and i you know and show a lot of stuff and i think you know fair is fair and fair you know, is fair. Take one for the team yeah. but 
you know, guys and the, I'm sure, and the women had a chance of saying no at any time. And all of it. Yeah, it was a conversation, game. definitely. Yeah, it and was, everyone was game to do it, to be fair yeah. for each other, which I love. Yeah, so. it, was, it was great. It was a great environment. Everything was a conversation. You know, we we talked. We had a, a, a coordinator as well, which which I've worked with one on the first job I ever did where I had a sex scene. And, and it just makes things so much easier and so much more relaxed uh because you're very clear on what's happening there's there's constant and clear communication going on mm -hmm. um so yeah and i think at, at, also too at that point like we're comfortable with each other you know it's not it's not the first week of filming you know uh right. well that's what i mean like i'm sure like uh, for, i don't know what you guys filmed like i know you filmed the wedding like originally first but like week one let's say like you know jackson has a scene that might be a little uncomfortable like yeah, uh, yeah. i mean it's like the first thing we can film it yeah you're like you're like hi it's nice to meet you we're here uh two days i'm yeah. showing showing stuff so that's what i meant like maybe it was even better that it was like later like you know in the season because at least you knew everybody but yeah yeah i think that definitely helped i mean first week you're still trying to make sure you can walk and talk at the same time <laughs> let alone you know what i mean doing probably I mean, we have such a weird job. I mean, you, you, <laughs> no other job is it like you pretend to have sex and be naked and, and you do it with other people with the knowingness that potentially millions of people are going to watch it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's no other job is like this. So it's, so it's weird. really weird. And I commend my girlfriend for being amazing. Aww. and understanding yeah well listen let me say this when that scene showed so mm -hmm. i obviously i screened everything ahead of time so like that's like that's no fun because i don't get to see with anybody so uh, thought with people people like yelled so th the two things were one you look good so congratulations <laughs> <laughs> i heard that about everyone like you know everyone's like oh he, like you know and i feel like there's a jackson for everyone there's a grace for everyone there's a you know yeah. like everybody has their thing so you know, a lot of people were like oh like you know he looks good um, but the scream, I think the real scream was the fact that he sleeps with Lucy. So yeah, why do you think he did that? And then you brought up another good question. Do you think at some point, cause we haven't explored people have to like, have to remember the timeline here. So like yeah. there, yes, it's been eight years till the wedding, but they have, and Megan's kind of confirmed that you guys have mingled and seen each other prior. So like mm -hmm. there are interactions way before the wedding, we get to the wedding. Mm -hmm. So do people find out? I don't know. But what happened? What'd you do? Why haven't do this? You know, sometimes when you have alcohol and <laughs> you're around, you know, good people, good vibes, you know, things happen. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, we've, we've, a lot of us have been to college. It, it gets a little crazy. Uh, I think Evan subconsciously, is obviously still attracted to Lucy. Right. I don't think he, you know, we had that, I think it was episode eight, The Fair. Mm -hmm. And you know, we had that conversation where it's like, look, we're both adults, like, it's fine. I, I'm in, so in love with Bree, she's great. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's true, but I, I, I think that, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, there's this thing about not having something that you like something being out of reach for you mm -hmm. that I think everybody at some point has experience of like oh I can't her so I want her more um which isn't really healthy if I'm honest but I think there's a little bit of that still down there because it, it was rejection like he he got rejected yeah. in a really I mean it was it, that was tough you know when he was drunk expressing his feelings and being you know shut down like that and then having to see her all the time because she's friends with the group and uh so I, I think yeah there was there was subconsciously still a little there I think emotions were high I think she was upset I, I think he was upset mm -hmm. I think you know I don't know what Megan has planned but I have ideas of how that night potentially went and uh, one thing leads to another and you, you, you get the ending. So, yeah, uh, but I don't know. I don't know if, I, I don't know if people found out. I don't think they did. I think, 
Well, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I guess we'll see. I guess. Yeah. My only <laughs> inkling was at the wedding when um, Lucy says to Brie, you know, I'm really happy for you, right? And then she, I think, but see, I think that's Lucy. Though. Yeah. And then, when, and then I was like, Brie doesn't know. So like right off the bat, I was like, she doesn't know. But right. I don't know if other people knew. And maybe she was worried that it was going to come out. Uh, like at the I wedding or something. I, I wasn't sure. I don't know. I don't think Brie knows. I think Brie maybe thinks something. But I don't think she has any confirmation or wants to know. But this is just me talking. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, we're like we're just like making up like possibly. yeah, we're making up shit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're just going with the flow. We're just helping to write season two. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't <laughs> wait to see what they come up with for season two for um when we get a season two uh mm-hmm. or yeah for what happens and how it obviously eventually ends in some way. Right. How does it? Does it happen for or when does it potentially and how does that happen? Are they mature about it? Do they keep going for a while? Do they stop? Do they, you know what I mean? What does that fall out? Because also that was the last day. Like everybody's heading home soon after. Right. So what is that summer like? You know? I know. This is what I want to know. Cause like, all right. So to finish out the show, right? So we mm-hmm. we circle back to the wedding, which is where we uh-huh. started the show. Uh-huh. And so now Evan's with Brie, which now makes sense, right? Because in the beginning, we don't know any of you guys. We're kind of like meeting you guys. We have no idea who's doing what. And I was telling people as they were watching the show, keep going back to the first one. Mm -hmm. And then you'd be like, wow, that makes no sense. Like, how did these people end up together? What happened? So in the end, we're at your wedding reception wedding party like mm-hmm. it's not a wedding yeah, yeah. Sort of so yeah yeah it's like some like some sort of party related to the wedding mm-hmm. and you know evan in typical fashion is just taking care of problems Riggy, Riggy's not gonna <laughs> yeah. over. so like yeah. there that's kind of like wrapping up at least for now his story but he's with brie so right. like we know that what's interesting is the fact that yes we don't know what happened after and i was wondering so, like, I don't know what Megan and Kara will write or, like, all these people will, will put in there or Megan and the writers, but I was kind of wondering if she dates him because I feel like that would be such a good, and I hate to say this for Lucy because she's so manipulative, but I feel like it would be a good fuck you to Steven because Steven shows up at the wedding. That was the last, the big hurrah, like, the last third, like, third shock was yeah. that as he showed up to the wedding and he has, and he throws around, you know, he's so, Jackson's so good at it. Where he's like, yeah, yeah, my fiance, I just got off a plane from JFK. Uh, red eye from JFK. Oh, man. This world is <laughs> yeah. weird. Shit. He's, like, he's just chilling, which he wanted me to, re- you know, I think uh, during your live stream, reiterate that it was his hair that he had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like, that was my hair. Um, yeah. But yeah, he shows up and he's so nonchalant, whatever. And oh, she can't wait to see you. And then, you know, we're expecting Diana, clearly. And not only is it not her, but it's Lucy's friend that she's had forever. So you're like shocked. And like yeah. the show ends and you're like, what the fuck? Like I just sat there and my mouth was open. But that, so, but that, that, that smirk at the end was not only the most vindictive and, and evil this. smirk I've ever seen in my life. Jackson killed that. But uh, I think it, it just tells you that more havoc is coming. Doesn't it? Like, yes. So I don't, I don't know if Jax, if, sorry, not Jackson, Steven, if Steven finds out and, or, and doesn't say anything, it just does his own thing and creates havoc and is playing the long game. You know, how do Steven and Lydia even meet? Meet, yeah. yeah. And hounds next to each other, but if they don't, if Steven and Lucy are over for real, which I assume they are, then how does Steven even meet Lydia? What happens with Diana? What happens with Lou? You know, there's so much that I know. is like it, in the gray. It like literally can like blow your, it literally can drive you like a little crazy. I told them, I was like, you fucked me up. Like when it was <laughs> over, cause like literally I couldn't stop thinking about it. And you start going down like a really serious like rabbit hole that's like super not healthy. Yeah, but, right. like, I just kept thinking all these things. And in particular, <laughs> I'm so glad you brought that up because I asked every single person what that last scene, mm-hmm. you see Lucy on one side, mm-hmm. Lydia on the other, mm-hmm. Jackson in the middle. Mm-hmm. And the whole time Jackson's staring at Lucy while she's like hugging her friend, right? Mm-hmm. And they're standing there, the music starts playing. And it's like, you see Jackson, oh, Jackson, you see Steven and he's still looking at her and it ends. And to me, the look was like a checkmate. So I wanted to know what everyone else thought. Cause I was like, what's happened over the years. So my theory uh-huh. I made up uh-huh. was that she dates you 
but so so like mm, he meets Evan. Like officially dates but, Evan. Yeah, dates them. What or what you want to call it? I, I don't know. Like, so okay. I don't know if maybe they okay. take breaks, something with the summer, like you said, like just you know, distance, whatever. You're not in the same place. Some sort of dating something. Uh-huh. Because there's no way that he could be that mad about what happened in school eight years later. Like, you know, because she manipulated him so much that he was like kind of like a shell a little right. bit towards the end of the season. Uh-huh. Wouldn't be that mad eight years later to like yeah. fake kind of marry, like, or you know, I'm sure they're gonna yeah. I assume they're gonna break up, but like to engage, you know, get engaged with her best friend. I don't think you're that mad. So what would make Steven so furious to be like, <laughs> like, look who showed up to this thing other than to get back at a friend because he's not going to get back at you that we've seen yet. He, we, we don't see him talk to you, but you saw what he did. Just the fact that Wrigley hooked up with Diana before they were even together. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. What steps he puts into place. I, like, I just felt like he was too mad Yeah. from what we've seen. It, it didn't like equal the amount of anger that I felt that look gave. So I asked everybody what they thought about that look. And it was funny because everybody has different answers. Like yeah. maybe Jackson, you know, had his own answer as to what, like what that look was. And like all of them interpreted differently, which is what I love about this show. But yeah. to me, like, I was like, he's too angry. Like something else happened. Something else happened to make him that mad. Here's the thing for me. It's like, in my head, I think, Stephen finds out some way. There, at, at first, when we were filming it, I didn't think that. At, at, when we were filming it, I was like, oh, nobody finds out. It's just between Lucy and Evan, but it kind of drives them insane. And for some reason, they call it off or whatever. Right. But him finding out does make sense. And my thing, well, especially for the ending, but if he finds out, I feel like Stephen is so vindictive that he would somehow tell Bree. But I don't think Bree know, knows and can confirm. Right. So, you know, I saw somewhere on Twitter, someone was like, uh, uh, Jackson or Steven should write a letter to Bree and say, ask uh, <laughs> Lucy what happened, then, or ask Evan what happened the night of the uh, Hawaiian party or whatever, you know, sending a note as well. That's, that's amazing. But yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think Bree knows. So then it gets kind of complicated. I think, I think maybe you know what destroys you more than knowing sometimes is not knowing. Mm -hmm. So having a hint of something. So maybe there is a hint. So instead of, you know, he knew with Wrigley because Diana told him, but maybe there was just hintings that that was happening and he just couldn't take it. So yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm just I know, and, I, and like literally I'm hoping I'm not ruining an idea for season two, but to me <laughs> it makes such perfect sense because, right. he, because let's say that happened. And let's say Lucy goes, oh, my God, Steven's going to show up. I know what he's done to Wrigley, right? I know I know his game. I know how he plays it. We're all together maybe for the first time or, like, maybe things have happened. Whatever would cause her to be worried because she's worried because she goes up to Bree and specifically goes, like, you know I'm happy for you. Why would you do that unless you're worried that he's going to plant some sort of seed at the party like he's literally oh, walk over say something like so like that's how i took it so i was like wow like something's happened and she's covering now so she's going you know mm -hmm. how to him. you know like i want nothing to do with mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. and then she goes yeah like we weird out so she knows yeah. nothing that's like, interesting I yeah prepping for jackson i keep saying jackson now for steven's movements because i think <laughs> yeah yeah that, maybe. how much of a blow up would that be I'm really just interested to see how Evan handles all of it. <laughs> poor Evan, you know. Because he, he uh, because if Brie, oh my gosh, I'm just thinking of all the possibilities. Like if, let's say, Jackson does plan something in Brie's head the day of the Cause wedding. Because this isn't the wedding, right? This is like a- No, party. it's just a reception. So like, yeah. what if you guys don't get married? Because like he- he throws something that that's what I was thinking is like she is like warning her and going you know I'm really happy for you because she knows Steven's that's game interesting. He... so either I, I either I just welcomed you to season two or yeah, right. just this random craziness that I've made up because I've seen this show so many times yeah, I don't know I, I'll have to I'm gonna talk to Megan I'm gonna see I'm gonna <laughs> see what she's thinking maybe I can get a little insider info little uh info. if Megan even knows last time I talked to her she didn't know either she's 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 uh she or maybe she does and she's not revealing yet until it's on paper but yes it's a lot of things that can happen in season two 
and I am ready for all of it. More sex, more lies. <laughs> Games, more drama. More everything. We're here. So hopefully. good. Yeah. Well, I love I love Evan so much. You know, I love you so much. Thank you. He's love such you. a great character on the show. But I have a very important question from me uh, to ask you. Okay. So I'm, I'm pulling out the phone, which I never do on one of these, uh, but I'm pulling out the phone. So I had tweeted out and asked if people have questions for you. And I asked uh -huh. a bunch of them. So hopefully everyone will be happy. But Megan Oppenheimer has submitted okay. a question for you. Yes. She said, Brandon, in a fight to the death between me and Kara, who do you think would win? Uh oh, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> She's goofy. Uh, it's, uh hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like question. you don't want to get upset both are my well, here, listen if it makes you feel better Kara did write back and she said at first I read this as in a fight between me and Brendan <laughs> it's not like she meant like the two like you two getting yeah, into it yeah, yeah. but if a fight yeah in a fight to the death between me and Kara who would win I, I, you could be like I, diplomatic I, and say a tie I, if you want to yeah, but I think Megan would get a little scrappy, you know. That's I what I, I was like, Megan's yeah, scrappy. Yeah, I think I think Megan Megan likes cats too, you know. I think some of that would come out, you know what I mean? Like, like I feel like Kara's like a badass, but I feel like yeah, Megan will go like she'll go for your like jugular. Like I feel like she's scrappy yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah I think I, I think yeah, something about the cats makes me think that Megan like he just. <laughs> <laughs> I make fun of her all the time about the cats, but she her loves rescues. us so much and it's 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 sweet. But yeah, no, it's it's all right. Might so you, go so with Megan going, on that. All right. So we're going with I had to I had to ask that question because that, you know, very important VIP Thank question you. coming in for you. On yeah. Twitter. But um I just I just love you. I love everything about you. Uh, thank and you. I think you're thank acting. You. I mean, this show is just unbelievable. The acting on the show is incredible. Your acting is so good. The subtle hints you do with the movements, the eye, mo like even how you look sometimes in a certain way, like it's just feel you. People love you. Yes, uh, they might be upset about that one like moment. Oh my gosh, like you yeah, know, guys, overall, please tell me people are disappointed in me. It's it's really no, I've never had the whole it. internet disappointed at me before. That was, no, that was crazy. I think I think what you know again, people have to keep in mind the time. You know, it's time frame. You weren't with Brie that long. Yeah. So Different. the love will come back. We love Evan. Evan's like yeah. the sweetheart. And I don't think he meant anything bad about it. Like no, that, but... no. Too much tequila. That's what it was. Too much tequila. <laughs> he needs to stay away from the tequila. Well, we love you so much. And I want to thank you for coming on and answering all my questions. I started oh, nice slow and then got crazy hard on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me. This has been amazing. You're, you're amazing. And I'm so happy to be able to do this. Thanks for having me on. Hope you guys enjoyed listening to Brandon talk about his interpretation of Evan's decisions this season and our breakdown of the finale. Don't forget to check out the full season, which is available currently now on Hulu. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts. And head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, so you're updated on all of our video content.